What's up guys, in this episode I'm gonna give you a sample 50 for 50 day of $200 profit of what it would look like including shopping and treasure hunting. So let's get straight into it. Yeah, 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 What's up guys, welcome to A Reseller's Life. My name is Chris, thank you so much for joining me. In today's episode, I'm gonna give you guys a sample day in the life of the 50 for 50 program, which is 50 items times $20 profit for $1,000 per week income. You do that 50 weeks a year. There's your full-time $50,000 income if you wanna give the middle finger to your nine to five. So this is how this works. I'm gonna go over sort of some shopping. I'm gonna go over listing and shipping and go over some tips to help you build your online store. If you guys appreciate this type of content, please smash the like button and consider subscribing I'm going to give you guys one to three tips in every video to help you build your online store. So when it comes to the listing, I recommend you get your process down to about five minutes per item. So for me, 10 items takes about an hour. It depends on what kind of items and how long it takes you to research them. If they have a specific code on them, like a model number, it's obviously much easier to list. For me, these items are really easy to find. So selling similar on eBay was super quick. So the 10 items that I listed um, were a pair of brass bookends that already sold. So those packed and those are packed and ready to ship out. I actually found the similar ones on Etsy. They're a reproduction. So those are not too valuable, cheap, sold them to get them out of the store. I don't like sitting on inventory. That's not going to make me $20. I'm going to get rid of that stuff as soon as possible. So here we have a little mini vice, a three inch vice. I thought about keeping this, but um, I don't really need this, but it's very cool and very heavy. So this will ship in a padded flat rate envelope, but inside of a box so that it makes it there safely. And I like to separate you know, heavier items into boxes like this, Marie Kondo style, just so they don't damage the other items. Um, this is a vintage knife. Um, not sure the exact purpose of it, but I did find the exact same one to sell similar on. Um, this is that Bates address finder, like a Rolodex back in the day. Uh, these don't sell for very much, so I will be cheap selling this quickly. And if you watch the video of me sourcing, I actually got this for free by just bundling it with a different item. So sometimes if I'm, if I'm okay with the deal, I'll just say, can I also have this for free? And oftentimes they'll just give it to me for free. Sometimes I'll ask for a little bit more. This I would not have paid for because it, it didn't look that valuable. It was just kind of cool and I wanted to see how these old Rolodexes work. They're just very entertaining to me. Uh, next are these LeBron Liverpools. Um, for shoes, I'm gonna leave the uh, thank you note actually inside the packaging, just so that it is a nicer presentation and I won't forget on the back end. Um, for shoes, um, that this thank you note's not gonna get damaged, but inside something heavier it will, so I'll put that in after, during the shipping process. Um, here I got this this crazy looking brass ashtray. So listed this really high at $200. I don't think it's going to sell for that much, but there was a similar one that they were asking $256. So I'm not really sure why these are so valuable. Maybe they're not, but again, you know, sometimes you have the POA pricing, which is pull out of your ass pricing or pull out of air pricing. So, you know, this is a little fun thing. I can see why people like treasure hunting because it's fun and you can price things at ridiculous prices and sometimes you get lucky. Um, this is a vintage Japanese alarm clock. I've sold a lot of these flip clocks. I know that the white dials sell for more money. Um, Long Jeans Symphonette. I just put in the listing that it's not working. 
um, very well. It works okay, but I don't want the person to feel like they're going to get something amazing when it's not. The, the alarm works fine, but the actual radio is not very good. And there's no antenna on this, so I don't know how it would get good reception anyway. So maybe the antenna is built on the inside. A lot of these old clocks are made in Japan. So very cool. Uh, I think I paid five bucks for this. So, you know, interesting find, not, not probably not worth a ton. And it's going to be shipping in a cubic, um, maybe 0.1 or 0.2 container in a box. Cause this seems relatively fragile. Now this phone, which is pretty cool. Um, these sell for around 50 bucks and it is, I think, silver plated. It's, it's pretty cool even to have that old 415 area code there. Um, this is, you know, I live in the Bay Area. That's the San Francisco code. So maybe somebody will want this as a piece. The dial does not spin very well. So I put that in the listing and, you know, these sell, I think, as props. I don't know if people actually use these still. The, the market value of them is around 50 bucks. Um, but, you know, I just listed mine for 40 because I only paid a couple bucks for it and I'm looking to get rid of it. Then two pieces of Navajo jewelry. Um, these I'm learning a lot about because of one of my coaching clients. She sells this type of jewelry. So I'm just learning about it. Um, I learned what these different things are called. I called her to find out what these pendants are called and turquoise and just to help me identify what they were because I'm new to the jewelry game. But again, I'm just starting this new treasure hunting uh, section of my show just for fun. And I think a lot of people just want to, you know, treasure hunt. So you can build a business and treasure hunt at the same time. So these are the 10 items that I listed. Now we're going to talk about my ideal day as the 50 for 50. So that means 10 items per day at $20 profit or more. For me, a perfect eBay day would require no actual taping. So it was almost a perfect day in, in this scenario because I only had to use tape on one item. If I have to use tape, I want to make at least $20 profit because it does take a little extra time to find a box or build a box. And you know, this is an old vintage phone that I sold for 65 bucks. You can sell these for more, but I picked them up for, I think I picked up 10 of these phones for five to $10 each in that estate sale a while ago that you guys watched. So this is one of the last ones remaining. This one was new in box. Um, put the thank you card in. And for me, I like to print out the labels. So I have this already laid out. I'm gonna go ahead and print. Let me hide the address. So I do use a dymo. It's gonna print uh, my labels over here. And then I'm going to uh, just pause the video here for a second. And then I'm gonna redo it once these are printed out and show you guys how I tape them. So I actually have these laid out in order. So um, when I'm printing out the package, I make sure the packing list has the items in order and then I just package them all together. So for me, it's easy for them not to get mixed up because there's a mixture of priority mail and first class. In an ideal world, I guess I would do every other one, but it hasn't been too difficult and I don't really mix up the orders because I double check before I package them. So this part of it is actually pretty fast. And this is just where I go through. Most of my items are clothing or, and shoes. If they are heavier, um, I'm actually a little bit more careful. Let's see. So I'm just matching. First class I know is in this type of poly mailer. This item is a little bit more fragile. These are the, is the Brass Eagle um, bookends that I sold. Um, so it's priority mail. And you can have the custom SKU print what it is on here if you like. This is a little bit more fragile, so I'm going to hand put it into the bin. Uh, okay, this is priority mail. And you can just double check. If there's flat rate envelope on it, you can just match it up. This one's first class. This one is priority mail again. Another first class. This one, priority mail flat rate envelope again. And the final one is first class mail. So I always do shipping at the end of the day because I have same day handling. And so I like to get all the shipping done um, at the end of the day, just to save time. I have my tape gun handy. I'm gonna tape this shut. 
And of course it would save time if you use three inch tape here. Um, but again, this is just free eBay tape for the time being, but it just depends. I have a lot of, I do have three inch tape, but I just use free tape on these small boxes because it's pretty easy. And again, if I'm not making $20, I don't like to ship using tape because it just takes extra time. Poly mailers are much faster for me. I can ship 10 items in usually about six minutes. Um, otherwise, um, if I have to tape, it takes a couple of minutes per box. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please smash the like button. And all my videos are sponsored by my reseller field guide, which is 35 bucks with code YouTube in the description below. It goes over the eight processes that I use to run my store. So I appreciate you guys if you stop and pick that up because it will greatly help me continue to improve the channel and give you guys sort of the overview. I'm helping you guys do either two models. One is the 50 for 50 model where you go and find 50 awesome items treasure hunting style like I showed in this video, or you can learn how to buy bulk liquidation, closeouts, work with suppliers, that's more businessy, a little bit more boring, but it's a little bit more stable because you can get inventory that comes in, you sort through it, you can hire employees. It makes it more viable if you're doing it for a living, in my opinion. Um, but again, either way you want to go is fine. I'm going to show that you can do it both ways. And I do enjoy treasure hunting, but really only for unique, interesting things, Americana. That stuff's more appealing to me, but I know it's going to take a long time to sell. So that's sort of like a lifetime style store. The marathon store is just fill your store with interesting things from around the world. Shout out to like Scavenger Life. They have a gigantic store of things that they found all over the world. That's the type of store that I'm talking about when it comes to fun, more hobby style. If you're going to try to make a living, support a family, and you have a lot of overhead, I definitely recommend doing bulk liquidation buys, get stuff coming into your store. Otherwise, the onesie twosie thing of looking for things one at a time doesn't add up very quickly. I mean, think of the difference between finding an item one at a time versus purchasing a thousand at a time and looking through that lot to find out what's selling well and what's not. And you know, in the garage sale game, I am a salesperson at heart. Um, I worked for Lexus of Fremont for four years selling brand new cars. And that was awesome. I definitely recommend people try internet sales there's no BS. It's not like selling cars in person where, you know, whatever, it takes four hours of negotiation. Internet sales are done over the phone and through the internet, through email. It will teach you to work with customers with exactly what they want and delivering that. Otherwise, you're going to go somewhere else because dealing with people on the internet makes it really, really easy to find out if it's the best price or not. All the industries in the world have changed to now online being the focus of the way they do business. So hopefully this is useful, guys. Again, smash the like button. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Feel free to shoot me an email anytime at chris at dailyrefinery.com. Take care, everyone.